How's it going everyone? David from DoD Media. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can create a swipe transition effect in Premiere Pro like this, which will allow you to transition between one shot and another without having to use any cheesy transitions or hard cuts. Let's go. All right, so we're in Premiere Pro. I've got the two clips that I want to transition between. I have the first clip placed on top of the second clip, so on the second track, and I have the second clip placed on the first track because what we're going to want to do is mask this first track to reveal the clip that's underneath it. Now, if I come down to opacity here, you can see mask one because I've already masked this. I'm just going to show you what it looks like. As it transitions, this mask here is tracking along with my hand and changing shape ever so slightly as it does so. And you can see here that there's a bunch of keyframes and those keyframes are tracking the mask path, which is going to allow you to change the shape of it and the placement of it over time. So let's just go ahead and delete that mask so that I can start again from scratch. Now, if I play this, it just transitions as a hard cut from one to the other. Cool. So the very first step is finding where you want your mask to begin and where you want it to end. I want it to begin here because as you can see, there my hand is still at the very edge of the frame. But on the next frame, there is already some of the grass peeking through, which we're going to want to be transparent so that it shows this clip below. So I'm going to place a marker there, hitting M on the keyboard, and that way I know that that is exactly where I want the mask to begin. And then we'll come along to the end of the clip, the last frame where my thumb is still visible, where the mask will still be visible, and then the next one nothing's visible and this clip should be completely transparent. So I'll just go ahead and cut it there using controller command K and I'll get rid of that endy bit. Look at that, beautiful. The next step is just to check your opacity, make sure that it's all unkeyframed, that it looks like this basically. Then come over to your fit here and just fit the video so that you can actually see a lot of the gray around it. This is gonna vary depending on your screen size and your resolution. Uh, for me, I have to go to 25%. Then I'm going to come back to opacity and here is where it depends a little bit on what you're using to transition. If you're using a lamppost or a straight tree like that, you could just go ahead and use this four point polygon mask because it's such a straight edge that that's not going to change as you're transitioning, as you're swiping it across the screen. And it'll be a lot easier for you to do that a lot faster. However, because my hand goes along there and you can see it's kind of, you know, it's the shape of a hand, there's a thumb there. Um, I don't just want to use a, a straight line because I feel like that would that would be a, bit, a little bit crap. Um, you would see that it was fake. So what I'm going to do is come to the free draw bezier. I'm going to start nice and low off frame, going to click once, and I'm going to drag it up here. And if you click and hold while you drag out, it will actually create this nice smoothed out bezier shape. So then you can just basically draw the outline of what you want so I'm just going to draw the outline of my hand, putting nice lots of points in there. And then finally click out of frame, click one, two in the corners. So these will act as corners of the mask and then come back. So essentially the four corners of the mask are this point here, the lowest left, the lowest right, the top right and the top left. Everything else in between is essentially shape. All right, now the problem is that this is actually masking the wrong side of the picture. So you just have to come over here and hit inverted and that will mask the part that we actually want to mask. Then the mask feather, again, it really depends on what you're masking, how fast the transition is, all of that. Because of the speed of this transition and to try and retain some of that natural motion blur that's happening on my hand, I'm actually gonna go ahead and make the feathering 100. That way, that looks pretty good. All right, and now this is pretty much in the middle of the transition. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit mask path. Now you can do this two ways. You can do this manually, which always works, or you can do this using the automated mode, which doesn't always work. In fact, rarely works, but let's try it anyway, just to see if it does work. No, it did not work. All right, so let's do this manually. We've created our keyframe there. We're gonna to go to the very start of our clip of our transition, let's say, and we're gonna drop another keyframe there. And we're gonna to go to the very end and drop another keyframe there. Now, let's go back to the very first keyframe, first of all, and move this 
out of frame, like so. Then let's go back to the very last keyframe. Let's just extend that by one frame so that we can actually affect that mask because otherwise it ends that event. Okay, very last keyframe. And we're gonna drag this over here like that. Now we're gonna select this corner and drag it over past the edge there and select this corner and drag it past that way as well. And now that way the mask is filling the entire frame. So now this is gonna look pretty terrible because we're only using three keyframes. But already that's, you know, to the naked eye, that's not bad. If you go through frame by frame, yeah, it starts looking a little bit terrible. And this is where we can refine it. Now, instead of going through frame by frame and moving every single point on that mask frame by frame to make it perfect, which is what a lot of people do and a lot of people waste their time doing that, instead, what you should do is go in 50%. So the space between these two keyframes here, just look at the 50% mark on that. So in the middle there, take this mask and move it to where it needs to be, roughly speaking anyway, and just drag the points to fit. And that way, if you go between these two keyframes, you can see that actually that mask is tracking pretty well just because you're tracking the natural movement from one to the other because it was a pretty constant movement. Now, if we go back to the 50% between these two first keyframes, you can see that mask isn't as good. So what we can do is just move that out of the way and then, ah, and then just move that in there like that. That's already pretty good. Here is also pretty good already, but you can see that the thumb there is actually going a little too fast for the mask. So we'll just bring that little part in there. And this way you don't have to change the entire mask. You can just change parts of the mask that aren't quite lining up. Okay, carrying on, carrying on. Now we'll go to the 50% mark between these two last keyframes. So the middle keyframe and the last keyframe. Again, you select the mask and we're just gonna drag the nodes that need to change, not all of them. Okay, and now if we go back and look between them, well, my hand there is looking a little bit, I'm not sure if that's just the motion blur that's not catching it. I, I think it's just the motion blur. Okay, well, let's go now between the 50 mark of those two. Okay, and then finally the middle mark between these last two keyframes. You can see that it's really just my thumb that's kind of causing problems there. And again, let's just drag that out of frame because that's already gone. And there we go. And now if we play this back, lovely. That's pretty good. You can see a little bit of extra leaking through on my thumb. And so you could go ahead and just, you know, change that, just fine tune it so that that part there isn't showing on the mask. But otherwise, that's pretty good. If you need to expand or contract the mask in any way, you can just do that using this expansion. You can even keyframe any of these if you want to, if you need your mask to suddenly get a little bit narrower or narrower, well, narrower, or um, if you need it to get wider. Let's put that at 15. That'll help with that little thumb bit. And that is how you make a mask transition in Premiere Pro. All right, that's all from me for today. Give this a thumbs up if you liked what you saw and hit that subscribe button to get more videos from me at DoD Media. I'm doing reviews, I'm doing tutorials, tips for filmmakers and photographers. I'm doing monthly giveaways, uh, vlogs, and I think that's it. Is that it? I think that's it. Leave a comment in the comment section or send me a tweet at DoD Media. I'd love to hear from you. Check out my Instagram where I post stories and content about filmmaking and photography as well as the work that I do. I'll see you in the next video, Transition Swipe. Literally had to pick the part of the park that's filled with crows and school kids and dogs and old people, but whatever. <laughs>